Do you want to know what blockchain technology is? Maybe you're in crypto and you've been invested in different coins for a while, but you really don't understand exactly what blockchain is, or either you are brand new to the world of cryptocurrency and you heard about Bitcoin, but you don't know the underlying technology to it. Today, we're going to tell you in very simple terms that either a child or a senior citizen could understand what is blockchain technology. Hey guys, welcome to BitBoy Crypto, your one-stop shop for all things Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So today, for our beginner's guide to Bitcoin, we're going to talk about what is blockchain technology. And some people may say, well, why would you want to explain what blockchain is before you even really explain what Bitcoin is? And the reason would be because blockchain underlies Bitcoin. So really to understand Bitcoin, you have to know what blockchain technology is. So today we're going to be breaking it down for you in very simple terms. And if you would like to know more about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, make sure that you hit the subscribe button to this channel. We do beginner friendly content as well as intermediate and advanced content as well. So, okay, guys, we are going to start with what is the definition of blockchain. Now, I'm going to be reading you guys this definition, and then we're going to go back and read it again, but we're going to break down what each one of the parts of this definition means. So, okay, this is coming uh, directly from the dictionary here, or dictionary.com. A system in which a record of transactions made in Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency are maintained across several computers that are linked in a peer-to-peer -peer network. So let's start, guys. So it is a system. So we all understand what a system is, I would hope anyways. It's basically a method of doing things. It is a pattern, something that is predictable. It's something that you know when you have uh, a system that's consistent that every place you go where this system runs is going to run in a very similar fashion. Like you can kind of think of McDonald's, right? They have several different franchises, but McDonald's has a method to their madness. It has a system. You know when you get go to a McDonald's anywhere in the United States, at least, it's going to be pretty consistent. There may be a few things that are different, but in general, they have a system that they run their business by. So a system in which a record of transactions. So a record of transactions, this is where a lot of people kind of compare blockchain to a database or blockchain to a giant Excel spreadsheet. Because when I say a record of transactions, it's very easy for you to know what that means because you just think of a log of transactions. If you think of Excel, if, if I said, hey, write down every transaction that a business made over a one-hour period, that would make sense to you. You would just jot those down. Boom, 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 boom. However, one of the differences we'll see in a second with blockchain is if you were to make a record of transactions on your own computer, that's just one place that's storing that data. And we're going to look at what that means in a minute to have that data stored on several computers. So, okay, so we got a system in which a record of transactions made in Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency are maintained. So, okay, so we got the system. We understand the record of transactions. It made in Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency that are maintained. So that means that any transaction that is made, any transaction, whether it's uh, sending Bitcoin to another person, sending another altcoin, which we'll talk about in a later video, to another person, that also means any trade someone may do, that means anytime you receive cryptocurrencies, all of those count as a transaction. Basically, sending or receiving a cryptocurrency makes a record in that log of transactions. Now, each, each uh, blockchain does not necessarily need to be linked to a, an individual cryptocurrency per se. You can actually have blockchain technology but not necessarily have an underlying cryptocurrency. But in general, when we're talking about blockchain, we are talking about transactions that are made, sent, received, traded, whatever it might be, uh, in a system that are maintained. So maintained across several computers. Now, this is where blockchain really starts separating itself from glorified databases, uh, from Excel spreadsheets. 
they're stored by many computers at the same time. So you, that's where the word network really comes into play, a network of computers. So if you were to keep a log of transactions from a certain place for an hour of time, as I mentioned, that is only on your computer. But with blockchain, these records are maintained across several different computers. There are so many computers in a network and they all have the same data. So what that means and what makes blockchain special is that if 10 computers all have a record of transactions and one computer tries to mess with the data, tries to change the data, tries to manipulate the data, the other nine computers say, oh, you're manipulating the data because we all have the data stored correctly. So if you were to think of a computer network that stores transactions, you would have to have a majority of the computers on that network manipulate the data in order to affect the blockchain. So that's where like a 51% attack, you may have heard that phrase uh, before in the world of hacking. That's where that comes into play. But with the Bitcoin network, for instance, there's so many computers on the network that it would be really, really difficult to overtake that network. So the long and the short of it is when it says is maintained across several computers, that means that many computers are storing the same data at the same time and that keeps the data from getting contaminated. So they are linked in a peer-to-peer -peer network. That's another thing that makes this great, right? Is we are not just saying that, that these 10 computers that we are, we're talking about in this network are owned by one person. That wouldn't be a true network. It's gotta be peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning that these computers on these networks are basically just ran by people at home. There's not one centralized area where all of these computers are so the data could be quickly manipulated. So if there were 10 computers and I needed to change the data on six of the computers, but I had all 10 of the computers in front of me, then that would possibly, you know, possibly be an option someone could do. However, with blockchain being a peer-to-peer -peer network, it would be nearly impossible for someone to go to six people's houses in a short enough period of time to manipulate the data when we're talking about a network of 10 computers. So that's the definition of blockchain technology, a system in which a record of transactions made in Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency are maintained across several computers that are linked in a peer-to-peer -peer network. So now that we understand the definition, let's look at three things that people consider to be the pillars of blockchain technology. So these are the three things that really make blockchain technology exciting and make it different than anything else we've seen in the world. So number one is decentralization. So decentralization, as we were talking about in the definition, means that there's a decentralized, a peer-to-peer -peer network of computers. There's not one computer that runs the show. There's not one computer that is able to manipulate data. It is decentralized. Also, data is stored in a decentralized fashion as well. So you kind of think of this as uh, you may have heard of torrenting, like with BitTorrent or uTorrent. The way that those work is they have a file, like let's say a movie, and then on the network, on the peer-to-peer -peer network, the movie is split into like thousands of different mini files, little bitty files. And when someone wants to go to somewhere like BitTorrent and watch a movie, they download it, but it's not downloading from one place. It's actually downloading many, many, many different files from different computers. So just a small shard, a small segment, a small fraction of that movie is stored on each one of the computers. And that way it's able to pull them all at one time and create, uh, create a movie. I keep hitting my microphone. Sorry about that. Um, but that is what decentralization means. It's very simple. Centralized means one source, one place. Decentralized means many sources, many places. The other pillar or one of the other pillars is transparency. So one of the cool things is if I were to say, uh, you know, let's go back to our example of our transaction logs. And we were to say that you have one transaction log you made of a certain number of transactions in an hour at a certain place. Well, that's stored on your computer. And to get access to that, I have to be able to go to your computer and pull that up. But with blockchain, everything is transparent. So any person could pull up that transaction log. And that is one thing that keeps blockchain honest. It's one thing that removes 
the need for trust. That is a big thing when it comes to blockchain technology is trust, right? Where when we go to places and shop online, like we just trust that they're doing the right stuff. But with blockchain technology, you can see all the transactions. You can actually see every Bitcoin transaction that has ever been made on the blockchain with something like Block Explorer. You're able to see the history. And that is one thing that makes blockchain totally different than other kinds of technology that we've seen is that you're able to see the entire history of a transaction. Like if you have, have you ever seen uh, have you ever seen a dollar bill that was stamped with some, I, th I think it's like, where is George? It, it's something like that where you stamp it and you can actually look up the serial number of that dollar bill and you can see every time that someone has had that and they jotted down the serial number of that dollar bill and w maybe what they did with it. But with blockchain, there's no questions. There's no guessing. You can see literally everything that has ever occurred in the history of Bitcoin. And that's one thing that makes blockchain technology exciting and totally different. So the third thing that is considered a pillar of blockchain is immutability. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't turn the volume down on something. Immutability. Sorry, that's the kind of dad jokes you get on this channel. Uh, it, what it actually means is unchangeable. The blockchain is not changeable. Because it's stored, because the information, the data is stored in a decentralized way, and there is a permanent record of it, it can't be changed. Like I said earlier, to change it and to manipulate the data, you would have to take control of more than half of the computers on a network. And that's one thing that makes Bitcoin so much stronger than any other cryptocurrency, especially when you start getting outside of the top 10 cryptocurrencies. What you'll find is the networks aren't huge and it's difficult to take control of those networks, but it actually can be done for a lot of those cryptocurrencies. But with Bitcoin, there's so many computers on the network, so many miners that it's almost impossible uh, to do. Now, is it possible for someone to take over the Bitcoin network? We'd have to cover that in a different video, but yes, it is possible. Is it likely? No. And the more that the network grows, the less likely that scenario is. So, okay, guys, we have looked today at the block, at the definition of blockchain technology, and we've also looked at the three pillars of blockchain. So let's just go over them one more time. Uh, the definition of blockchain, a system in which a record of transactions made in Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency are maintained across several computers that are linked in a peer-to-peer -peer network. And of course, we also looked at the three pillars, uh, which are decentralization, transparency, and immutability. So if you guys have any questions, make sure to drop them down below. If I can't get to them, I'm sure other people that are part of the Bit Squad, that's what we call our community here, would love to answer your questions. So I hope that was simple enough. It's really hard to break down blockchain any more simple than I just did. I, it's really oversimplification is what we just did, but that's okay because it, everyone needs to understand what this technology is because it's the new internet. This blockchain technology is going to be a second layer to the internet, in my opinion. All companies that you guys currently use are going to be using it. Um, it it's kind of like trying to explain what the internet is. If I said, hey, could you explain what the internet is? You would actually kind of probably have a hard time, but it's also very simple at the same time. We all just kind of internally understand what the internet is, and I think blockchain is going to be a second layer to that, and it's also going to be thought of in a similar way in the next five to 10 years. So you guys drop your questions below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, Bibboy out.